guys. Hi there. Welcome back to our another edition of our vlog. And today we're in Algonquin Park, the biggest and the oldest provincial park in Ontario. This is also the place where we've experienced the most magical and mysterious morning of our camping life. And our second campsite was just legendary. So make sure you stay till the end of this video and let us share this unforgettable moment with you. Last year we really wanted to get into Algonquin, but apparently it's so busy and popular that we could not get a camping spot. So this year we tried to get in early. And today we would like to take you on this small journey with us so you can enjoy the sounds and view of nature and decompress a little bit and decide whether you want to come to Algonquin one day. So we decided to start at the Mew Lake and we're doing a two nights and three days hiking adventure, staying at the Provoking Lake and at the Head Lake. So we're going to show you around the trails and the campsites. Let's go! Okay, so while we're walking to our first campsite, spoiler alert, it was excruciating. Let us share some fascinating insights about Algonquin Park. So it's certainly a very popular park, and it's not just the largest in Ontario, it's the largest park by territory in entire Canada. It was established in 1893, and the main reason why it's so popular is that it's easily accessible within three hour drive from Ottawa, Montreal and Toronto. The nature in this park is very special because it includes a variety of different climate types and forests, including spruce forest forests and various parklands. All that creates an amazing biodiversity, making Algonquin Park a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, attracting 12 million visitors every year. There are almost a thousand plant species to encounter in this park, and a special mention also goes to the fungi. These are the fungi that pop up practically everywhere you go in Algonquin. No matter the season, you will see dozens of different fungi types. They're fascinating. I watched a documentary about hey, it recently. Anastasia, I think you're getting off topic here. Okay, okay, fine. I think we're actually approaching our campsite now. Actually, I was wrong. Uh, the trail was a lot harder than we expected, so it took us much longer to get to and find our campsite. When we got to our campsite that night, we were starving and exhausted, so we didn't feel like filming. But the next morning, when we woke up well rested, breathed in fresh crisp air, made some fire, started preparing breakfast and poured ourselves some coffee, that's when we got a lot more chatty. Let's see what we had to say. It's day one, early morning. Actually, not so early. It's around noon right now <laughs> and we're packing up. How was your night, Anna? It was very nice. I'm very happy with my new sleeping bag. Mm. It kept me warm all night. I will not recommend my sleeping bag. It says that it's supposed to be up to minus 17 degrees, but no. I was freezing tonight. Don't get your sleeping bags from Amazon. Yeah, it's a very nice location, but hiking here was very tough. It took us more than four hours and it was 13 kilometers. The terrain is very difficult, so you have to go up and down all the time very difficult. Anastasia got wet because she misstepped on one of the creeks and she stepped in the mud and her right foot was all wet so half of the night yesterday was spent trying to dry her foot near the fire. I almost burned my hiking shoes. <laughs> yes. Yeah the terrain is really tricky so we did 13 kilometers and we hiked all the way to the head lake. I would say it's a nice hike for those who are experienced, but if it's your first camping, first hiking of the season, you're not prepared physically, it's tough. And this is Head Lake. How do you like this lake? It's nice. It's pretty quiet. Do you think it's worth coming here during summer to swim? It might be. It's very private, so the nearest campsite is maybe like three or four hundred meters to the right and to the left. So if you want to swim naked in the lake, uh, this could be a good spot for you. It's a very beautiful area. You can canoe on this lake. Canoeing is actually a much better option here because you get to enjoy the views and you don't have to exhaust yourself. Good point. So Algonquin canoeing. 
Today we're going to the provoking lake. I wonder why it's called provoking. We have several theories. If you have a theory, let us know because we're very curious. And this campsite is really good. I think it's meant for a lot of people. The terrain is a little bit slanted, so we were actually sleeping with our feet lower than our head. Yeah, and I was sliding down slow and slow. You know what's the best feature of our campsite? It's the benches. Just look at that. These are the real handmade benches. Two logs, another couple of logs, and the ropes. And it holds, fairly comfortable. It's not like you can sit here for a very long time, but it's still pretty cool. Okay, so today we're gonna go to the Provoking Lake. Uh, we have another campsite there. It's gonna be about a seven kilometer hike. Part of that route we're not looking forward to because it's very tricky. It's up and down, up and down. Lots of rocks, lots of roots, lots of just uneven terrain that we have to walk on. Oh, hope we'll make it, it'll be fun. What was your highlight of yesterday? Mm, having dinner, <laughs> because I yes. was starving. We ate so much after yesterday's yes. hike. Would you recommend the Alfredo chicken? Yes, I would definitely recommend. Very dark campsite, and we heard coyotes howling yesterday, so it was scary. I had to wake Anastasia up. You know, they say that coyotes or wolves' eyes shine in the dark, so I was afraid I would see something like this in, in the bushes somewhere. There is not much to say about our way back. Going back is always easier because your route is just more familiar. When we got to the second campsite though, we were pleasantly surprised. How do you like our new campsite? It's awesome. It's the best so far. Yeah, it's better than you imagine. Look at this lake. Two guys canoeing over there, small island. I bet you can swim there in the summer. Let me show you around. We are right on this tip of this tiny peninsula. Lots of sunshine. Very spacious and airy. This is our kitchen. Oh, so beautiful. Savory cream sauce with mushrooms and onion. That's why you like it, because it's with mushrooms and onion. Mm. Bon appetit! Bon appetit! This is our view for the dinner. This campsite was the best reward we could wish for after a torturous 13-kilometer hike on that day before. It was a perfectly secluded mini peninsula, surrounded by the lake. We were blessed with the warm sunny weather, and it wasn't windy at all, so that night we went to sleep feeling good. And then, this is what we saw the next morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. This is day three for us, and we just woke up to this beauty. The morning fog took over the provoking lake, and it was mesmerizing. The clouds have descended upon us, consuming the lake, the forest, the sky, and us. It's 6 a.m. right now, and it's impossible to go back to sleep because it's so pretty. Yeah, we woke up to pee, and Anna was like, you have to come out, you have to see this. And here it is. The fog is a perfect metaphor for life. Just like in life, it might seem scary and spooky at first, but as the time passes, everything becomes clearer to allow you to see the beauty of life and everything around you. It's pretty mm -hmm. chilly. Spooky. Mm -hmm. It's time for breakfast. I can't wait for my breakfast. Yes, and it's a little grumpy, but we're gonna feed her and she'll be happy. <laughs> I 
All right, so today is day three and uh, we woke up early enough. It felt a little bit humid and then we realized that it's very foggy. How was your sleep? Uh, it was fine, it was fine, but I felt that everything is moist during the night. Now I understand why. Plus condensation in the tent. Eventually, the tender sunshine cuddles you with warmth and energy to help you move forward with confidence as your path becomes clearer every minute. As we contemplated about life, a couple of loons paid us a visit. I think it was a perfect climax for our camping journey at Algonquin Park. Yeah. So, what are your impressions of the Algonquin Park so far? I like it, but unfortunately I would say it's not as picturesque as I would expect it to be. Because there are so many people in love with Algonquin Park and it's huge, so probably this area is not the best. I wouldn't say it's very well maintained, just judging by how, just by the indications of like where the, the camps are and where you should go on the trail. It's not very clear oftentimes, but the uh, on the campsites themselves, you can see a lot of clear signs of people. Our campsite had a garbage bag left. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please take all your trash with you because it's not nice. It's not nice for the people who are coming after you to camp and it's not nice for the nature. And it's not nice if there is a bear or a coyote or even a squirrel and they smell this garbage and they come to the campsite and they keep coming back because it smells with food it's not nice it's no. not a nice surprise for the next campers mm. <laughs> to encounter a bear during the night yes it's time to go it's our last few minutes at this campsite i think we'll definitely be back one day i we really it. liked it yeah it's wonderful especially the morning was great and now we're off to Mew Lake parking yes. spot to the trailhead. All packed. Yeah. Leave no trace. Classic motto. And also make sure the fire is fully off. Even yeah. if it's cracking, you have to put a little bit of water to make sure that there's no fire, no risk to spread the fire. No smoke, for sure. Yeah. Okay, ready to go. Great mood. Great weather today. Clear, warm, not too hot. Birds are singing and it's time to go home.